Hey everyone, welcome to Locked on Lakers for Wednesday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky, Dalton Connect scores 37 on nine three-pointers as the Lakers win their sixth straight. That is next. You are Locked on Lakers, your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day thanks to everybody for making locked on lakers first listen of every day monday through friday sometimes on weekends no matter how or where you get your podcast this one's always free it's never behind a paywall locked on lakers on youtube is we're over twenty six thousand subscribers and growing quite quickly uh are all andy rejoicing at the rookie dalton connect um man alive was he doing some stuff for the Lakers on Tuesday night? 37 points on a cartoonish 9 of 11 from three-point range. Uh, again, not from, not from the free throw line, not from the floor, from three-point range. Uh, Dalton Connect shoots, shoots uh, a 9 of 11, and um, he just keeps – on Roland. He was hot, Andy, coming into this game. He uh, left even hotter. Do want to let people know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app and use the code locked in NBA. Get $50 instantly when you play $5. I don't even win, the, win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Um, Hope you picked more than uh, Dalton Connect eight three pointers. <laughs> you win <laughs> eight and a half threes. Congratulations. Hope they were juiced odds. <laughs> juiced. Um, it is, and there's a lot of, there was a lot of stuff. And I know, like, it was the, the joyless uh, among us, will Andy will, uh, will, focus on how they didn't, you know, they, they let the Utah stay in it too long and this, and that. Go this find is a, a different show, Joyless right. folks. We're not like, doing that. We're come, not doing come that. Come back. Time. Come back the next day. Right. Come back the next day. We want you back. But for this one day, we're if not doing you are that. looking for tearing these guys a new one for not maintaining the focus of the first half, ain't happening tonight, Sally. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's one of these deals where um, – you know, look, because in, in the reality of it is the Lakers were in control of this game throughout. They got off to a great start and great stayed, defensive start. Right. And we'll get to that. Stayed that way throughout the scene. Like there was a, never any real threat of them losing this game. We're just not doing that tonight. Um, there was a lot to like. Anthony Davis had a phenomenal game. He was fantastic. LeBron played a great game. Uh, both of those guys had 26 points. LeBron was 9 of 17 from the floor. Anthony Davis, 10 of 15 from the floor. LeBron had 12 assists. AD had 14 rebounds. He had six assists. He had two steals. Like these, Those guys were great. Uh, we'll get to the contributions of Cam Reddish uh, over this course of this game. Uh, J.J. Reddick was effusive uh, in his praise for... Uh, D'Angelo Russell, and rightly so, uh, for a lot of the the work that he did in his in his uh, twenty six minutes of play. But Andy, this game is about Dalton Connect. Um, yeah, it was it was it is about Dal we've had Fernando Mania in L.A. We've had Nomo Mania. We've had whatever it was called when Manny got here. Um, Manny, I, we're like what they one named it. Manny would. Right, That's but it, it had no mania. It had no mania. Is my point. There was it wasn't like Manny Mania. It, it might have been. It, it was, but it wasn't called that. We're like one more of these, I think, away from Connectomania in L.A. If we're not there already, to put this night in perspective. Thirty-seven points. He had twenty-one of them in the third quarter. Nine threes, the most ever for a Laker rookie. He tied an NBA rookie record in the process for threes. Okay. He's the fourth Laker ever to hit nine threes in a game. Uh, more from Lakers uh, media relations department. The 37 points most for a Laker rookie since Kyle Kuzma had 38 in 2017. Also, just for those into the history of the Lakers, 
that uh, 38 tied Kuzma and Jerry West. Most points ever for a Laker rookie, D'Angelo Russell with 39. Um, he's also just the second rookie in NBA history to record 37 plus points and nine threes in a game. Like just, just an absolutely spectacular night, complete with and just like serious <laughs> for the kid having the awareness to do this. After I'm not sure which three it was, he actually turned around and gave a shrug, like the MJ shrug, and he earned all of that showmanship. It was just an effing tastic. The way this have because we've looked, I mean, since the Dalton Connect hot streak started, this is game five of the hmm. Something's going. I, th I think he might have broken out of his early season slump. We're on game five of that. <laughs> he he was over his last five four games coming into Tuesday night was shooting. I want to say fifty three percent, fifty two, fifty three percent from three point range in that in that stretch, and and raised that to like sixty five <laughs> in this game. Um, it the, the impact of a player like this. Because it's not just a guy who can come in and score. It's not just a guy who can come in and a bunch of shots. There is something very specific about what three-point shooters do for your team that is different than other stuff. And it, you know, it's comprehensive. You saw, and it's it's, it's even just start with energy. Like the crowd was going insane. For this, the bench was going insane for this. It picks up the energy of the team in ways that very few things do when you see somebody just rip off three, four, well, five threes in a row. Anybody who has watched the Warriors over the years mm -hmm. has seen this effect with Steph or Clay or Steph and Clay. Like when you have nights like this where it just seems like a dude is unconscious and there is nothing you can do about it. And look, Connect was not guarded in ways like Steph and Clay typically were because he hasn't earned he that yet. Typically guarded at all. <laughs> right. I, you know, it is the Utah Jazz, but just the biggest, you and I were texting about this. The biggest reason, and this is why also we're not particularly mad about them only winning by six. We both think the biggest reason that the Lakers got sloppier defensively, lost some focuses, everybody was so caught up in what Connect was doing, they kind of forgot about the whole, yeah, we still got to play a game thing. Right. Like, and it we got still got to the, actually you know, execute. <laughs> it was six, you know, got to like, you know, the, the, some of that was like late. There was, again, no real threat the Lakers were going to lose this game. But it... You know, his first two threes, for example, I I know the first one, I think the first two, were both corners. Yes, uh, they were. You know, corner threes. Uncovered corner threes from a guy. You've really been working hard, Andy, finding, digging up memes. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. I was two. excited about this night. It's, 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 it's two today that I've counted that are new to the show. Very excited. Uh, really, about just a night. reminder, you really should be watching on YouTube mm -hmm. um, if you can, because, you know, Andy, Andy's, uh, <laughs> Andy's working hard. Yes, he is. Um, those were two, un because he connect moves very well without the ball. And so you see uncovered corner threes. Those are going to be like free throws <laughs> you know essentially so if you can get those set up like okay they're not going to guard they're not going to be aware those are incredibly high value shots the lakers are going to be able to get the flip side is i happen to think that teams are going to tighten up good teams especially are going to tighten up quickly on connect because nobody likes being humiliated even by you know by a rookie even one that is you know apparently like 62 years old which is why Dalton Connect wasn't drafted uh until 17. Um but that Andy will have its benefits for the Lakers which we'll uh we'll discuss next. 
Locked on Lakers is brought to you by FanDuel. Tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet just five dollars, five bucks, and you get 150 bucks in bonus bets if you win that five dollar bet. Like take something like Dalton Connect hits a three in a game. That seems pretty good right about now. The FanDuel Sportsbook app also gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. And it's great if you just want to confirm your feel for a game. Like, let's just say just in the middle of a game, it's felt like, man, I have anticipated every big momentum swing in either direction, big touchdown pass that was about to happen, big turnover. You got can, that ear tickle, Andy. We all yep. know what happens when that happens. Yep. Well, what hap- What should happen is just go check out the live play-by-play and so much more on the same page, the stats where you would place your bets with FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com to join today, and you get started with 150 bucks again, in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Again, I highly recommend Dalton Connect hits a three. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So, I mean, look, there were a couple moments in this game, to say the least, Andy, where the Utah Jazz probably did not thrill their head coach, Will Hardy, with the, <laughs> the effort that they were putting in defensively to find and stay with Dalton Connect. <laughs> well, I thought you were going to say also what some of the stuff they were doing offensively. There was a sequence. I don't remember which jazz man uh, orchestrated this. <laughs> it's my favorite way to refer to those guys. <laughs> jazz right. men. Whoever it was ran a one-on-two break off a Laker miss and pulled up for three and missed badly. I was just like, yeah, well, yeah, well, you know who I, I don't remember, but I don't think it was Clarkson, which is what you would expect. No, I don't think it was Jordan Clarkson, but I was just like, dude, are you serious? But, if, but again, that's the that's the Jordan Clarkson effect. He was no, one of your best, book, man. one of your leaders. But that's how you get to be three. <laughs> Cooper Flag ain't going to arrive in Salt Lake City by himself. No. But you know, it's so. I, mean, I do want to say this: like one of the things about Connect that is really great, and yeah, you know, we were joking about, you know, we were talking about like Nick Young in terms of comps and different things and whatever uh, on on the show. His name came up. Uh, Jordan Clarkson has been a and you know was a guy who provided a lot of offense off the bench in kind of a microwavey sort of way. I'm not saying he's a similar player to Connect, but like in terms of his like offensive players, it's one thing to have a guy who's like quote unquote instant offense when he comes into a game. Connect does not take bad shots. Like these, he is not a guy who takes you out of your offense. Especially, and this is a point um, I wanted to, I meant to bring this up during Tuesday's show, but uh, Darius Soriano over at Lakers Film Room podcast, a friend of the show, also Pete Zayas as well, he made a great point talking about Dalton Connect ever since his minutes started going up. His shot selection actually got better. Oh, I'm sure. The The more time he spent on the floor and the more opportunities he would get, just because before it's like his minutes were limited, but he was clearly being told, We want you to score. We want you to put up shots. So it's like, all right, well, if I'm only playing 10 minutes, I can't be all that picky. Now that he's actually getting extended minutes, he can be more judicious as he gets more comfortable and in the flow and more confident anyway. And and those minutes come in in higher leverage moments. They come in more. They're not, it's not garbage time. It's not whatever. And like, so like it matters more that you're following the game plan, but the game plan, look, I mean, is he going to take some, aggressive heat checks and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, Tuesday, was he taking some shots that if they were, if it was a six point game against, I don't know, the thunder, like would, would some of those shots not have been taken? Yeah, of course not. But generally speaking, he's not one of these guys who's just hoisting from all over the place. Cause he's hot. Like he takes and makes, he makes good decisions with what he's doing on the floor. And so, that is something that separates him from, you know, sometimes young, pure scorers that are just shooting, but a little bit more indiscriminately than I think you would want on a team with Anthony Davis, with LeBron James, with Austin Reeves, 
And that is, I think, one reason why you know he's not going to hit 82% of his threes for the rest of the season, I don't think. But like I, I'm confident that offensively he he is going to be somebody who sustains things because he's not doing outrageous stuff. He's just move he moves very well to put himself in position to get clean looks and can shoot from basically any position that he gets the ball. Yeah, he moves well, period. He he got yeah. set up on a really good play by Anthony Davis when he's running a baseline cut. You know, we we've talked about before the athleticism and the ability to get to the rim with force adds a different dimension to this game. It is funny though, like this game in a way reminded me a bit of and you and I were in the, we were not in the building tonight, but we were in the building for both Kobe's 81 and Kobe's 60, his last game, where because Connect was getting so hot and you could tell the crowd was so into watching him shoot, where like if anybody else took a shot, there mad. would be murmurs of <laughs> yeah. booing and stuff like that. Like it, it became very clear after a while. Like these guys were, and again, we talked about how it kind of took them out of their own flow and own focus. They were getting as caught up in like, do you think he can do it again? Oh my God, Let's he did it out. again. Holy bleep, he did it again. But it's not, but that's the thing. It's like the, there's, I'll go back to it. Like there are certain guys who are good shooters. Austin Reeves is a good shooter. D'Angelo Russell, though he hasn't been this year, is for his career, he's a good shooter. LeBron has turned himself into a good shooter. Yeah. That's a different deal than what, the category that connect is in and sometimes those guys are rock stars like, that can do everything like steph clay at their prime you know all this stuff all the way down to like very limited guys but who can really shoot like you know a luke Kennard or something like that the there that is a different category of player and you know i, I was talking in the first segment if you if their guys aren't going to cover him and he move, you know, like most shooters, three point shooters like this, you want a guy who can move really well off the ball. He does, and so that is going to draw the attention of defenses. Or if it doesn't, you end up with wide open corner threes that are as high percentage of a shot as you're going to find in an offense, uh, aside from like a layup. Uh, if connect as I think he will starts getting the attention of better teams and better defenses, well, that means somebody's going to be chasing him around. That means somebody's not going to be helping off of Connect when you know Reeves penetrates or Russell penetrates or the ball goes inside to AD. Those players who are assigned to him are going to stay home. That is going to have an effect on the Lakers' offense. So whether teams pay attention to him or don't, it is, if the legitimacy of Dalton Connect as this kind of shooter is going to do wonderful things for the Lakers' offense. Well, here's the other thing, too. Like, beyond the idea of a defender sticking to Connect and really being mindful of not leaving, it's one thing to do that with, you know, like, like, first name that comes to mind, like a Steve Novak of the world, who is, you know, a very, very good shooter but he wasn't necessarily someone you were thinking as much about moving. It was just like, you can't leave him alone. Right. He, you know, he, you like where you left Steve Novak when you turned your back is probably where Novak right. still is when you turn around, but you can't leave him. Can't leave him. But like, yeah. But when you're talking about someone that moves around a lot, like connect or like clay used to, or rip Hamilton, JJ Redick, those assignments get tiring. For defenders, like those are some of the more taxing assignments out there. Just run, just staying with a guy, Reggie Miller, running, all, running, 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 yeah, running, running, shoot. A guy that is always moving, like beyond the the way it occupies the defenders. Checking a guy like Connect, it's just tiring. It it's exhausting, especially when you start implementing the moving and setting up screens that you have to fight through stuff like that. Like it becomes a really taxing defensive assignment and you can see the lakers are already starting to get into the recognize what they're what they have in connect and are getting in the habits of of finding those screening opportunities one of those baseline threes was freed up because ad set a really nice baseline screen on a 
I'm assuming the jazz man who was trying to close, <laughs> it was a little late, <laughs> a little late getting there, but AD screened him off and that left connect wide open. You know, D'Lo, not always known for these sorts of off ball, you know, little basketball plays and stuff like that. Had a couple of you know moments where he was setting, you know, set really good screens that free. He was kind of a sneaky good screener, though. He is. And you know, but like he but he he freed, he was the guy who mm -hmm. kept players from closing out. Like he's just the awareness, like they're all going to be doing this now. Like, you know, oh, you know, Dalton's popping out, find his guy, set a screen away from the ball and and create this space. Like I we we'll talk too, because I, I I think without getting ahead of ourselves cuz again like as hot as he is now he's going to have stretches where he is less hot and the, the ball's not the going hits down four threes. right <laughs> where he only shoots 65% from three <laughs> instead of 82 yeah can't wait for the what's wrong with Dalton connect think pieces but you know to have a guy who can at high volume shoot in the mid 40s for the lakers is something it, like as a professional shooter, like this is his gig, the foundational piece of his offensive game is something that, again, you and I have covered this team for almost 20 years. The closest thing that I can think of is, of is a guy who's like brought in to be nothing but like, like reputationally three point gunner to me is, is, and it's, it's almost apples to oranges because the league was so different was when they had Vlad Rad. I, I'd have to think about it more because a so, lot again, of there's probably someone else. But well, like, it, it becomes hard to remember because a lot of guys didn't work out, in all honesty. True. I think no, that's true. actually why a lot that's, of guys don't come if, to mind. If it wasn't just for the – if it wasn't – the, the, the Lakers effect knocks 20% off of it. Sure. Connect would have shot 102% tonight from, from yeah. three-point range. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, they, they, they've never really had one of these guys – and I think that's part of why fans are so excited because it is people can sit there and sort of lament the, oh, it's too much of a three point league and this and that, whatever. There is something really fun about watching a guy just <laughs> be able to drill three pointers from everywhere on the floor. Sure. It, it is kind of electric. And so um, it will also potentially have a good impact. Better offense can often lead to better defense, but sometimes better defense leads to better defense. And with that, Let's talk about Cam Reddish next. Locked on Lakers is brought to you by Prize Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active users. Prize Picks, the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you need to do is pick more or less on two or six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Different categories, for example, like Luka Doncic, more or less than 31 and a half points. Steph, more or less than four three-pointers. He's no Dalton Connect. Anthony Davis, more or less than 11 rebounds. Giannis, more or less than 29 and a half points. Prize picks, the best way to get action on sports in most states, including California, Texas, and Georgia. The only real money daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. So your lineups stay in play. Even if one of your players gets injured, you can also collect your winnings in 15 minutes. Download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code Locked On NBA and get 50 bucks instantly when you play five dollars. That's code Locked On NBA on Prize Picks. You get 50 instantly when you just play five bucks. You don't even have to win to get the 50 dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. So, Andy, the Everydayers, uh, first of all, the Everydayers hopefully are uh, signed up for the newsletter. You go to LockedOnDaily.com, click on Locked on Lakers, and you have the show really just delivered to your inbox every day along with uh, st other stuff from the network. Well, a great way to keep up on what's going on around the league. So, again, LockedOnDaily.com, uh, sign up for the Locked on Lakers daily newsletter. Regular viewers, listeners to the show, Andy, will know that I am a Cam Reddish skeptic. Um, I, I wonder how well, I always wonder how well it's going to work out. Reddish was fantastic in this game. 
Um, he in both the beginning of the first quarter, especially, but even you know as the Lakers opened the third, um, I think he took one shot in this game. Yep, one for he one. Made it. Yeah, um, <laughs> he and Connect combined for thirty nine points. No, 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 forty one. Uh, forty one. Remember, because he got to the line twice. That's true. Both. That's true. So when, but you, he made three or four or five very like noticeable and important defensive plays early in the game that helped the Lakers get out to this, you know, 10 five point, 10 point, you know, early dominant lead that they had. They finished the first quarter up 12, but they were actually up by more than that before the end of the first quarter. Like that was fueled in part by the defense and the defense was fueled in large part by Cam Reddish. Yeah, he had two early blocks and a steal for a transition layup. And you mentioned it really setting a tone in the first quarter. Three Lakers, Cam, Max Christie, and D'Angelo Russell had at least one block and one steal in the first quarter. And it really was, I thought, just like the foundation being laid for this great defensive start. D'Lo got up and blocked John Collins at the rim, which, by the way, side note, if D'Angelo Russell blocks your shot at the rim as a power forward, you should be benched for at least a month. Like, least. like John, John Collins spent a lot of this game looking like he wanted to hit something other than just Anthony Davis's nards. No, like he looked so mad during nobody, this game and frustrated. Nobody is more excited that Dalton Connect went for 37 points and had nine three pointers than John Collins because it means yeah. fewer people are going to see that play. Oh my! I mean, like D'Lo got up and you know he did uh, and like and blocked it and went down the floor and and in a in a game where Connect well, it turned, it turned into a uh, fast break assist layup. I, I yes, mean. to Connect. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the things that Reddick was talking about in terms of all the stuff that 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 D'Lo was doing in this game, from screen setting to defensive activity and all this other stuff. He made sure to praise D'Lo at length before he even started. This first question obviously was about connect, and Reddick stopped to talk about Russell first. Um, both because D'Lo played very well, but also, you know, hey, my man, I know, you know, I know your numbers aren't jumping off the page or whatever. You are being seen. And, you know, you're, you know, he, this role that is exactly the same as the role that you played last year. I'm not going down this rabbit hole. I had enough talking to with folks in the comments section. Um, staying out of this. But, like, you know, you are making sacrifices for this team and you are being seen and I will call, and I'm going to call you out publicly. He um, he did actually smart coaching. He did that um, with Max Christie as well. Like you mentioned, Kristen Coloco. I think he wanted to make sure because I I get a sense that he was very happy with how the team in general played, yeah. and in particular the the first half defensively, he was ecstatic about. So I think it was important to Reddick to make sure that everybody that he felt contributed, which was basically everybody. He wanted to make sure that even, even if you were a casual or just missed the game, whatever, and only saw the box score, that you would know, hey, a lot of guys chipped in to make this happen. Um, but just to get back to Reddish, I mean, before we're done, and I, it's interesting because he only played 25 minutes, and I think you know that could be something that fluctuates a little bit. You know, it could be you know a starter's role where he plays 18 minutes. It could be like, but. If he if he if his impact is that tangible, it's like you gotta you gotta give it to him. And there are nights when it's not. Tonight, uh, you know, Tuesday night, it, it really it was, and you could see it, and it was a massive reason the Lakers got off to the start there. Because you want to be able to you you know, the, the the complaint against teams like Utah is like, oh, you you let him in too long, you do whatever. You want to get ahead and stay ahead and how you start defensively these slow starts that plagued them a lot last year got to avoid that stuff and well, you know they they certainly did on tuesday if you're looking for positive signs with reddish from this game beyond just he played really well 
he just came back from that uh, foot ankle tendon strain issue. And the last couple games before he missed a couple games, Cam was not playing particularly well. His, his minutes dropped pretty precipitously. You know, it was coming at a time too when Max Christie started to rebound. So Christie was taking actually some of Cam Cam's minutes. Gabe Vincent, I think over the last couple games, has played better as well. And obviously Connect's minutes have gone up. So even with Rui out, you would still see Cam go down. My hope, because Cam looked very lively, very active in this game, more springy and athletic where, you know, the way Cam looks when he's at his best, it makes you hopeful at least that the last couple less impressive games before he went out were actually the byproduct of the foot ankle bothering him. And that's why he wasn't playing as well. And then, you know, he gave it a rest and he's actually just physically better because he's physically better. He can play better. Yeah. And um, uh, it, it, the Lakers are 10 and four. Six game win streak. I understand that this was not the hardest stretch of games that you could assemble in the NBA. Um, that said, you know, the, the, the uh, Spurs did beat, you know, that the, the Lakers beat on Friday. The Spurs beat Oklahoma City. I mean, Oklahoma City played without, without Wemby. Right. They played without Wemby and without Devin Vassell. Um, you know, so they, like that's, I think, one of the better wins they've had this season. But, you know, we'll see the Lakers welcome uh, Orlando, Orlando on Thursday. Um, they're playing without Paolo Bancaro, but have played pretty well. They're three games over 500. Six game winning streak. Yeah, you've got uh, the uh, the the Nuggets coming to town, and theoretically, uh, Nikola Jokic will be back in the lineup by by then. Um, he's missed the last three games, um, so like we'll see, we'll see. You know, a few more tests going forward, but like ten and four is ten and four. Like I'm not gonna sit here and, and apologize for you know the schedule that they've played or whatever they are 10 and 4 and this is as good of a start as anybody could have possibly hoped for we can maybe get more into this for thursday's show but we've talked before remember uh, earlier in the week we did the show when they were 9 and 4 you know how real is how real does this feel and i would be lying if i said i thought after the first 14 games that they would have a 10 and four record. I, I didn't think they'd have a four and 10 record. I, we've both been pretty consistent heading into the season. We thought this was a good, if flawed team, but we both thought that they were good and that the general punditry was likely too down on them. But what gives me a lot of optimism about this start is that even though it's better than I expected it would be, there's nothing about the way it's happened that feels fluky. Yep. Like there's, they have not been getting wins in ways that don't feel sustainable. If anything, they've often been getting wins sometimes in spite of the flaws that we expect. Yeah, I mean, I, you can look at that. That cuts both ways, and I can see you know, and can, you know, it's flu, is it fluky? Connect is shooting seven thousand percent in the last five games. Yeah, a little bit, but there's there's wiggle room here, and for other things to get better too. There's nothing that feels outlandish about it, though. Um, no, not not crazy. I mean, they have. They, I would say, they're fortunate that the teams they've played have not really necessarily been set to exploit some of the the weaknesses that they have. But they're also, you know, going to get one of their better rotation players back in Hachimura at some point. Um, but like, you know, look the through the end of the month, they go uh, home games: Orlando and Denver. Um, then they're at Phoenix and at San Antonio, and they finish the month at home against Oklahoma City. If they go three and two in that stretch, I think that tells you something. Yep. Um, better than that really tells you something. A little worse than that, you want you got to look to see why. Mm -hmm. um, but like three and two over that, like that's pretty legit. So we'll we'll get more into the the schedule upcoming. We get you ready for the Orlando game. Of course, a quick reminder: the Lakers never ever lose in season tournament games. Uh, the NBA Cup, the Lakers remain undefeated in those things. Um, and uh, this, because this is one of those games, we really get into it. Um, Lock on Lakers on YouTube is where you can go hang out with over 26,000 subscribers. We'll see everyone tomorrow.